Hey, SCORE fans, Kenny Holmes here. Many of you have asked for longer interviews, so here's an unreleased part of our chat with this week's guest, Steve Jablonski, and how he got his start with composers Harry Gregson Williams and Hans Zimmer. I know that you, of course, got your start with Hans and with yeah. Harry, and I'm not yeah. sure I know how Harry exactly plays into it. Um, I'd love to hear a little about that. And also, one thing that Hans is often mentioned is that young composers who are working with him get to sit in on meetings, and he mm-hmm. always thought that was important. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if there's a memorable meeting or anything that you learned that you took forward right. from being in those conversations with directors, studio execs, that was beneficial in Hans's world. Which sometimes get heated, too. Oh, yeah. Creative I, decisions. And, oh, my God. And everything. Any good ones? Any good knockdowns? <laughs> Let me you see. Can, you can leave the names out if you want, <laughs> but we'd love to hear Ooh, some hard. dirt. So I, I, my beginning at Hans's studio was as an intern. Mm. I had just kind of gotten out of college, and I didn't necessarily want to do film scoring. I, oh, wow. I was, I was kind of more into the engineering side of things. Mm. I, I knew how to play some instruments and stuff, but, but Hans was a huge... Uh, I was a huge Han, a Hans fan. Yeah. I heard all the scores and loved his music, and I thought, hmm, what studio would I like to work in? Nice. Well, how about Hans Zimmer? So I looked up his studio in a book and found the number and Perfect. called, and it was much smaller than it is now. Yeah. Now he owns half of Santa Monica. But then they said, yeah, come on down, and I came down and <laughs> interned for a few months, and after Ramin telling his story and you're telling it, they're going to get a lot of phone calls. Oh, after my these God. Episodes. By the way, if you anybody listening just wants a job, just just call Hans Zimmer and uh, just, be doing say, just say, come on down. I don't know if that works as well anymore. Go ahead. Yeah, it's a little big now. I don't know. You, you should still call. I mean, it's, it's a great place, but I don't want to discourage you. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it was a little... I don't sure. know, easier is the word, yeah. but it was more accessible then because it was course. smaller. And I... And at that time when I was there, Harry had just moved from from the UK mm-hmm. to be a part of his place. Yeah. And he was setting up his room and needed some help uh, setting it up, basically. So Good. I helped him do that. And, and your engineering chops must have come into it because you were helping. Yeah, they did, but I still, it was sort of new technology to mm. me that I hadn't messed with and uh, Mark Streitenfeld, another great composer, yeah. was Hans's main technical assistant at the time, and he was very generous with his time and would come over and explain how you kind of do these things because hmm. it's you know you have stacks of these samplers, or you used to. Now sure. it's all in a laptop, but yeah. you would have walls of these and just to wire them all into the right place. And it was all I kind of had an idea, but needed some help. But so anyway, I I did that for Harry and came to a point where he needed to hire an assistant officially and this is kind of a funny story that my my good friend Jeff Zanelli <laughs> was at Berkeley at the time College of Music yeah. and was told that when he got back during the summer during his summer break when he got back he would be Harry's assistant and at least this is how I understand it and I don't know if Jeff still hates me but <laughs> I, I didn't know any of this Harry just said do you want to be my do you want to be my assistant and I yeah. said yeah I'd love to yeah, he's he's a great guy great talent clearly and so anyway Jeff came back and but Jeff ended up working with John Powell they took so it our worked jobs. yeah <laughs> but but anyway so I was Harry's assistant for several years mainly technical at first and this again is a quick lesson for any composers out there I would when he left at night I would go in and just start messing around with the equipment because it was so amazing and the sounds were so great and mm. I didn't have anything like it at home. I scored a scene. He was working on the fan, the Tony Scott film with yeah. Hans, and I yep. scored a scene of that. Just, I'm sure it was terrible if I hear it now, but and somebody came in and said, oh, what are you doing? And they thought, oh, that sounds interesting. And I just it kind of snowballed into Harry going, oh, okay, you want to do that? Okay, how about you do this scene? And and then, oh, that's, that's not that's bad. How awesome. about you do these five scenes? And then Hans would come in and, oh, you, oh, he's doing that? Do you want to do this arrangement? Or he asked me to, the first thing Hans ever asked me to do, I think, was an arrangement of Driving Miss Daisy oh. for his, uh, it was a live thing. Hmm. Some and there, kind there were no concert charts. Of some kind. Yeah, it was a concert, and there were never any charts for that score because, any score charts, because it was all computer. Yeah. So he needed someone to create charts for it, which I did. 
and then it's it's that's the way that place works. It's I guess any business it just snowballs and no, not any business. I actually think that's very kind of you, but to say any <clears throat> business, I think the stories that you've told and shared show how supportive you said in the beginning of the Bob Batamy story, how you're carried along by other people. Yeah. Look at these stories. You know, Harry said, do you want this? Yeah. Um, it actually follows through. In some ways, Jeff Sinelli working for John Powell was critical for Jeff. Yes, um, exactly. I just randomly, I needed a composer for a picture at one point. We were doing Hitman, mm-hmm. right. and I went to Powell, and he couldn't do it, but he did the same thing. Great. He said, yeah. Jeff Zanelli can do it, mm-hmm. and it was a turning point. I think Jeff had done one other picture at that point. Um, unfortunately, the picture had to be scored in Paris, so Jeff and I had to go to Paris <laughs> oh. together, which is oh, really man. difficult. <laughs> um, but it, it's the point that you're making is that over and over again, it sounds like people are saying, take a shot, mm-hmm. we're going to support you, and that is rare. Yeah, no, I feel very lucky. If I looking back, when people ask me these questions, and I look back, I go, "Wow, a lot of things just kind of, a lot of people to thank, a lot of things just kind of went." But you do have to throw in the hard work. I, I don't think I left Hans's studio for a couple of years. I think I was there, <laughs> and I, think, I definitely slept there many nights. I though. think that is the critical and modest thing right. that you're not sharing as much right. is that they don't go to the person that leaves early and comes in late no, and say, hey man, sure. would you do something? It's the person that says, I'm all in right. and I'm totally focused. And those are the people you want to encourage and yeah. you know they'll show up. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast platform. And thanks for telling a friend about the show and helping us continue to grow.